Okay, everyone, welcome to episode three, or rather, uh, series part three of episode zero for the online U.S. Virgin Islands uh, chess virtual tutorials and online uh, educational trainings. It's me, guys, again, your host, Colin Heim. How's everybody doing today? 12.30 on the dot, uh, Tuesday, September 22nd. Just had to check my calendar date there. Sorry if that guy's got in the way. Um, let's go over a game that I just played on lichess.org. You guys can go to lichess.org today and open up a free account and play uh, free rated games. Well, they're not real FIDE rated games, but they are games that you can play. Um, and they'll, they'll uh, give you your own little uh, rating system based on how you play against other elite chess players. And I'll tell you guys, on lichess.org, they got some really good players there. So I would definitely uh, take the time to, uh, to go on there and, uh, and, and, play some, and play some LI chess. Got some great masters on there, and you got a lot of just strong players, right? Kind of like chess.com. Anyway, I just played this game this morning, and my player with the white pieces had an ELO of about 1,600, and I was playing on my account just below 2,000. I was about 1,900 something. And this was a rapid game, so both players had 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, I had the black pieces this game, and my opponent started out with one e4, one pawn to e4. And each of us had 10 minutes on the clock, and I responded to my opponent, uh, whose rating was just above 1600 to e4 with c5. So we get right into the Sicilian defense. Again, guys, this is just a really fun game to go over because... You'll just see it has a lot of elements of surprise. Really goes along with these two previous lectures that we've had um, in our episode zero uh, uh, instructional challenges. When we've looked at Enpassant, we've looked at castling. This game didn't have any Enpassants, but it did have some castling. Um, just some very interesting elements that go along with what we've been um, teaching and instructing in this virtual tutorial course. Thank you so guys for being here. Um, this means a lot. I'm sure you're going to get a lot, of, a lot out of this as well. So white goes ahead and pushes for the center with d4. I took with the c-pawn. Uh, white captures here. Now sometimes, you know, people capture here with the knight. Okay, it's not always safe to capture with the queen here. Because after queen captures, now black just has this, uh, what we call gaining a tempo. And as soon as that knight lands on that c6 piece, it's directly uh, attacking that queen there in the center of the board. So just going back, my opponent decided to take with the queen. Could have taken with the knight, but now I gain a tempo with knight c6. But he says, aha, I am uh, keeping your knight from moving to another square. Why can't this knight go anywhere? Right, because then it puts the king in check. So that's an illegal move. So my opponent uh, was very clever to see that, yes, my, uh, oh, my queen is under attack by this black c6 knight, but at the same time I can pin the knight on c6 by uh, attacking it with the bishop. Why? Because, as we mentioned, the knight can't move now. It would uh, put the king in check, which is an illegal move. Uh, so now I just develop my bishop to d7. Bishop captures knight. Bishop captures knight. And then now white just develops his knight to c3. So... Very interesting game so far, guys, right? A lot of development, just a lot of basic uh, beginner uh, opening, opening type preparation, as we call it. Now, uh, I played e5, attacking that queen on uh, d4, asking a question of the queen, hey, where are you going to go? Queen drops back to d2. Now I get my knight to f6, and white just castles. Okay. So the the, my opponent here decides to castle uh, right when he gets the chance after all his minor pieces are developed. And actually, it turns out all my minor pieces are almost developed once uh, that bishop gets to e7, the kingside bishop, of course. So now I went, and, went ahead and captured in the center here. Knight takes e4. He recaptured with a knight. Knight captures e4. I recaptured now with a bishop. And after realizing that he had just lost a pawn in the center, he had just given up the e4 pawn, uh, he decides to develop his knight now to the g5 square, which I cannot capture with a queen. 
because he will capture my queen um, and I will end up being very, very far behind. So that is not an option. Uh, instead, I dropped my bishop back to g6 and played good defensive chess. And he decided to continue with rook to e1. h6 now, asking a question of the knight. Knight drops back to f3, f6, queen e2, and rook to c8. Now you guys might ask, why did, uh, why did Colin play rook c8? What did he do uh, swinging that knight all the way over to c8? What did, or that rook. What did he swing the knight? What did he swing the rook all the way over to c8 for? Well, it's to eventually attack this c2 pawn, which is stuck right there on c2. Why? Because I have a bishop on g6 that is attacking that pawn as well as the rook now. So... Now, my opponent uh, plays knight h4, just attacking the bishop again, dropping the bishop back to f7, and now we see a check from uh, white, queen b5 check. And now, I just offer a, 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 a trade of queens here, guys. Okay, a trade of queens. Why do I offer a trade of queens? Because I'm up a pawn. Um, I have a much better center, and white only has six pawns, and meanwhile, on my side, I have seven. So offering a trade of queens here would be fine. If queen takes, then king takes, and I'm a happy guy. But instead of uh, taking my queen there, uh, my opponent just dropped back to d3, queen d3. Okay, now attacking the queen here, guys, with bishop to c4. Why can I attack the queen? Because uh, that bishop is now uh, backed up by the rook on c8. So... For example, queen cannot capture because there's a rook all the way up there that would uh, take that queen after it would recapture the bishop. So queen moves to another safe square, queen f3. And now I just uh, play more defensive chess now. I'm up a pawn here and I'm in a much better position and my opponent does not have any of his pawns developed on his queen side nor his uh, queen side bishop. Um, so he's actually not really in that good of shape. And now he just plays c3. I play rook c4, lifting my queenside rook, now offering an exchange of rooks. I accepted the exchange offer. Queen recaptures on e4, and now d5, right? Just, uh, I've been asking questions of this queen all game. She's, she's been very suspect by my opponent with the white pieces. And asking again where to go, dropping back to e3, and then now it's my turn. Uh, I went ahead and just uh, played rook, uh, queen to g4, a uh, major attacking move here. Um, now looking to target my opponent's uh, d1 square for the check. And not allowing me to get to d1 for a check and what would be a mate, actually. Um, blocking uh, my attack now. My opponent with the white pieces just blocks. And now e4 I played, now attacking the knight saying, well, now, you're, now your knight is under attack and you can't even recapture this pawn with the queen because the pawn that I just pushed is backed up by my queen and another pawn. So now you've got questions to ask. Well, he says h3, now I'm just attacking your, your queen. And you're just attacking my knight. So my queen, I drop her back to h5. He gets his knight out to d2, trying to get a better uh, course for that knight. And then now I just go queen d1 check, and this is a very threatening move. Queen d1 check. Uh, forces the king to move to h2 and now I'm coming with another check yes see that bishop guys that bishop came from uh, f8 uh, to d6 and now is checking that king again um, yes on that long diagonal so the king is really running out of places to go now I want to checkmate my, op my opponent as soon as possible uh, g3 now by white just blocking and then uh, I got a time to castle I got in time to uh, short castles, finally at this point, just to keep my king on a safe square and to uh, get this rook uh, involved on the king side. Now a little more development, knight to, knight to b3 for white, b6, a4, trying to go for something on this queen side, but it's just too late. Even with something like knight d4 now, after I played f5 and bishop c5, um, now I'm pinning his knight saying, well, you can't move the knight because... Well, there's a kind of a queen behind it over there, so nope, can't do that. Um, he goes ahead and develops his bishop now to, uh, to d2 square, and king h5, uh, we see g4, dropping my queen back now, and 
uh, Queen G3 now. So just a very complicated game now uh, between both team teams black and white. And now I decided here to get my rook involved. Uh, rook D8, uh, Knight F5 now for white. And bishop B6, Bishop E6 attacking the knight now um, with the queen and the and the bishop. My opponent tries for uh, one more queenside attack, and instead of recapturing that b4 pawn with the bishop, guys, just not worrying about that pawn because, well, all the play is actually uh, over here on the uh, <coughs> king side. So I don't worry about the queen side. I just take the knight on f5, g takes f5, dropping the bishop back to d6 now, attacking the queen, and actually making a skewer now because why the queen uh, is in front of the queen is in front of the king the queen is in front of the king meaning that this bishop can just take this queen now um, so white only has one move and that is f4 in actuality white could have played a move like uh, pawn takes queen here he could have just played uh, that f5 pawn attacking uh, g6 and then he could have just been uh, winning actually uh, because then after I exchange the bishop he's actually up a whole minor piece for only two pawns so he would have been uh, actually winning so I played a very very cheeky move that actually probably should have lost me the game uh, at this point guys but my player my opponent was so low on time here he only had about 10 seconds left in the game he pushed the move f4, and now I just captured that uh, f5 pawn with the queen. Uh, please find the uh, the winning combination now here for black. So this was the final move of the game after uh, bishop d6 and now f4, which was a blunder. Uh, he actually could have just taken my queen. Uh, with the f5 pawn as we reasoned just a moment ago but instead he just goes ahead and pushes f4 and then now queen f5 and this was the final move of the game queen takes f5 uh, pause the video here guys and try to find the winning move for black or the winning combination for black rather after i give you a couple of seconds so study the position think about um, with white to move here and how to just bring the crushing blow here for white. How to finish the game. Right, so if, if let's just say white continues with a move like defending. Let's just say rook to f1. Well, I can't capture with a pawn here. Actually, because... Now my king is in check, so it's an illegal move. Instead, I can capture um, actually I could just push this e-pawn and then uh, after let's just say bishop takes or queen takes the rook is coming to e8 and uh, now there is uh, absolutely no defense. Um, so, again, find the uh, winning combination just one more time for yours truly at the end of this, guys. Uh, white to move, and please find the winning combination. Okay, well, you can't take with a pawn here, because if you do that, then queen just takes rook uh, on the next move. So, white really has no good moves here. White can just play a move like h4, trying to do something, trying to defend or whatever. But now, yes, guys, look, rook takes bishop. Rook takes bishop. And now queen is forced to take. And yes, now bishop captures on with f4, check. Checking the king as well as... Uh, forking this queen here. So, if the if the queen now is forced to capture, if the rook is forced to capture, let's just say all that white now here, guys, is just um, <coughs> all white has here is let's just say rook captures. Well, then the queen captures, 
And now this is this is all just winning for black. Um, if some if something like okay, white just gives up and just captures here. White's king can get involved. Okay, and now it's sort of like a race, right? But virtually no matter what happens, black is always gaining the advantage here. So if you guys ended up getting to this end game, right, and you guys ended up getting to uh, this position, you will see that it is, um, it's just completely winning uh, for black. No matter what happens, the white king is always forced to move backwards, can't advance to that g4 square because that pawn on h5, so um, white has to play a move like uh, b5 just to keep things going, but then here comes here comes d4 and you know you really you really have to take you can't just you can't just kind of pass the pawn here because if you do that then that pawn is going to queen so you have to take and after takes takes uh, king takes there and now uh, yes it is just a foot race as we mentioned and after we see all this King takes, and now uh, making room over here. Well, it looks like uh, white's getting there first. Imagine that. It looks like white's getting there first. So, um, wow, kudos, kudos to white, guys. It looked like white ended up, uh, white ended up winning that, apparently, despite uh, what we just went through. So that was a real surprise. Wow. There you go, guys. White ended up uh, winning that position, and let's all the way. Let's go all the way back here to move 37, where we mentioned that uh, White could have just uh, taken on G6 and and had and, and been up a queen, and then I would have had to end up giving up my bishop. Yeah. So even though Queen takes F5 is the is the end of the game for White because White lost on time. It appears as though that when we look at the rest of this endgame here, white looks, uh, white looks like it's holding on, right? And uh, maybe not taking with a bishop here, but maybe just taking with a, uh, with a, with a pawn, right? I think let's just change, up, change it up here for a second. What if g takes on f4, and then now... Um, Yeah, I guess I guess then this is totally losing. Um, I don't think uh, White can have too easy of a time here. Um, yeah, I mean there's just there's just too many threats. Uh, Queen C two check. King has to go somewhere. It's better to go to one of those green squares, right? And then. Uh, yeah, this is this is just going to be hopeless because now, guys. Um, let's see why tries to prolong the game with something like this. Well, White has no good moves here, and this is the end because um, let's just say we play any random move with White, guys. As it does, this is mate. So it turns out actually when we look at. Um, a different a different line there guys it is better for black so again not taking with the um, not taking with the bishop but actually taking yeah not this but rather um, we had a better plan what if just G takes up for right so not taking with the bishop but taking with a pawn now yeah not the bishop taking with a pawn and black is just winning the game on the spot because of the long diagonal from the bishop. It doesn't matter if queen throws an a7 check and king is forced to go to somewhere like g6 and now rook g1 checking the queen and the king moving now to h5. You play any random move here for white, it doesn't matter because there's just a mate square. The king is trapped on h1 and that's just better for black. So um, 
I hope that was some really exciting um, chess there, guys. I, I hope you ended up getting a lot out of it because uh, that particular game, as it does, was a, a rapid game. And my opponent seemed to have a very hard time uh, making quick moves. And um, that's about 20 minutes for this episode zero instructional virtual uh, course, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this session. Um, it really flowed nicely for me. I'm really getting better at doing my uh, uh, speech uh, through these uh, discourses and through these lessons. So, again, another episode zero, just an uh, introduction to uh, um, uh, special moves, checkmates, um, winning on time, uh, won and lost positions. Um, all these things are definitely within the realm of our uh, introduction to these, uh, these virtual educational online instructionals and tutorials. I hope you guys really enjoyed this today. Happy Tuesday, and uh, yeah, please enjoy yourselves for the rest of the week. Many more videos to come. This is Colin with USVI Chess. Thank you guys. Bye-bye now.